Pokemon games are no stranger to mistakes and errors. Longtime Pokemon fans might be aware of some pretty famous ones, like how Pokemon Emerald's RNG is completely screwed up, making it very difficult to soft reset for certain shiny Pokemon or how in red and blue they accidentally made Psychic immune to Ghost. But I decided to dig up some of the more obscure and unheard of errors in the entirety of the Pokemon series. My name is Finn, and on this channel I like to search out the most obscure Pokemon knowledge I can find and bring it to you. If that sounds like your thing, subscribing would be super dope. But without any more delay, let's get right into it. One hidden mechanic you most likely overlooked has to do with your character in Pokemon X and Y. You see, every time you pass by a signpost in this game, your character will slightly turn their head as if to read it. And this is consistent for all signposts in the game across the entire region. But there is one single signpost in this game that has a strange oddity with it. That signpost is located at the daycare. And it's the only one that does not have this effect. No matter how you move past the sign, your character will never veer their head. It's still unclear why, but it seems like this is most likely just a coding error of some sort. There's a strange error with Jumpluff in Pokemon Colosseum, and I'm going to play a clip for you to see if you can notice the oddity. Did you see it? The error is that for some reason, Jumpluff's shadow is completely off. Even though Jumpluff's um, pluffs are round, the shadow shown on the ground depicts them as square. But this was fixed in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. If you haven't heard about the Korean versions of Pokemon Gold and Silver, they're basically known for being full of translation errors and glitches. But there's one in particular that I thought was really weird. When receiving the Togepi egg in Violet City, for some strange reason, the receive jingle that usually plays that sounds like this is just entirely absent from the Korean versions. When getting Togepi, no matter how many times you save and reset and get the Pokemon, the jingle for receiving it will just simply never play. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, if you hatch an egg while holding down the B button, you'll get a- Oh! Oh god, that's not right. I did something wrong. That's not right. I, I think I, I, uh, I messed up. I, I did something wrong. I'm just kidding. It's the sponsor of this video, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game based around hatching, evolving, and collecting dragons to create your own dragon empire. Something pretty cool about this game is unlike Pokemon, when you breed two dragons, they will take on each other's traits and create a new dragon. There's literally thousands of different dragons and PvP battling as well. Oh, you thought Foy Coco was cool because it was based on a pepper? Let me introduce you to Spicy Dragon. Okay, but seriously, it's surprisingly in depth. There's even a battle pass with weekly mini games where you can claim daily prizes and dragons. Download the game by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and get a special free starter pack of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the Flame Knight Dragon. Thank you Dragon City for supporting the channel and now back to the video. This one is not technically an error on Pokemon side, but it is an error, and you'll see why. Shout out to one of my viewers, Roland, who sent this one in my Discord. My viewer Roland was on a Delta Airlines flight, and the flight had a mini TV on the seat that had games for you to play. One of the games was a hidden object game, where you find things around the room. And while Roland found something that was quite out of place, tucked away in the corner of the picture was the official art for none other than Sawsbuck. It seems that this game's programmers must have mistaken Sawsbuck for a regular deer. And when I saw this, it legitimately made my day. So thanks, Roland. In Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, roaming Pokemon like Latios and Latios have a very strange oddity with them. You see, every Pokemon's IVs, or individual values, basically the number that determines small boosts in each one of their stats, is decided by a 32-bit number inside the game's code. 
But the entire point of a roaming Pokemon is that it's the same Pokemon everywhere. Its IVs, nature, and stats don't change every time you see it. It's a static legendary Pokemon just moving around the map. But in order to have a Pokemon be able to roam around the map and still be the same Pokemon, the programmers needed to store the data for that Pokemon somewhere completely different than usual. And sadly, this is where the glitch arised. The game ended up only being able to read 8 bits of that 32-bit number. And because of that, it means that every time you encounter a roaming Pokemon in Ruby or Sapphire, that Pokemon will be guaranteed to have their speed, defense, special attack, and special defense IVs all be zero. And because the move Hidden Power is dependent on IVs, roaming Pokemon in this generation can only have the Hidden Power type of fighting. I mainly wanted to stray away from glitches in this video because a lot of them are pretty well known already, but there's one I heard about that I thought was really interesting visually, and I wanted to include it on this list. It's called the Sticky Hold Glitch, and it occurs in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and it's actually pretty simple to perform. All you need is a Pokemon with the move Thief and no item equipped. Then proceed to knock out an opponent that is holding an item with the ability Sticky Hold. Then, once it faints, for some reason, the sprite of that Pokemon will stay on screen, even when your opponent sends out their other Pokemon. Not only this, but the glitched Pokemon will have its palette changed depending on what Pokemon is sent out, causing some incredibly weird colorations. There's a strange error in Pokemon X and Y that has to do with Sky Trainers. Something about these kind of battles glitched out the way that you can interact with these NPCs. So as soon as you finish fighting one of them, it's impossible to interact with them again afterwards unless you leave the area and come back. Otherwise, you cannot interact with them at all. In the fourth generation of Pokemon, during the story when you reach Conolave City, there's a mandatory battle with your rival Barry before you can cross the bridge. But there's something really strange going on behind the scenes with Barry's team here. You see, when you first fight him here, his Heracross has the ability Guts. But as soon as the fight is over, every single time you battle against Barry from here on out, his same Heracross completely switches abilities. From then on, he now has the ability Swarm for every single fight. It seems like this was just an error on the developer's part and not a glitch, but it's strange because Pokemon is pretty good at maintaining this kind of continuity, as there's not many issues like this throughout the series, at least that I'm aware of. In one of my past fact videos, I covered an interesting glitch in Black and White 2 that allowed you to surf on a random tile in the game. Well, Taffy and my Discord found an interesting oddity that does the exact opposite in Pokemon Black and White. You see, this tile right here is completely broken. For some reason, it's entirely impossible to initiate surfing from this one spot. Even though you can surf from every other tile in this area, for some reason this one just simply doesn't work. I actually have another weird error with the Eon Ticket from Generation 3, and it has to do with some text related to the event. When you receive the ticket from Norman in Petalburg, Norman's text is just absolutely broken. It has tons of mistakes, and I'm sure text for events like this are most likely some of the last things that get put into the game, so that's probably the reason, but it's still pretty crazy how broken this sentence is. Generation 3 is a very special generation when it comes to shiny Pokemon. It is the one generation that has an entirely fixed shiny rate. In these games, there is not a single method to lower your shiny odds in any way. Generation 4 had Masuda method and Generation 2 had shiny breeding. But if you see some sparkles rustle out of the grass in these games, that Pokemon is as rare as it gets. 1 out of 8,192. But, is it? Yes, it is. For every Pokemon, except for one.
In Fire Red and Leaf Green, the only place you catch unknown is a small room called the Monian Chamber in the Tenobi Ruins. And to find Shiny Unknown, it's as simple as running back and forth in this area until you do. But the odds of finding a Shiny Unknown in this specific location is not 1 out of 8192. But the answer to why is far more complicated than it seems. Every single Pokemon you encounter has an ID number that is completely hidden from you. This number determines many things, nature, gender, IVs, ability, and most importantly, shininess. But a coding oversight in this game led this number to also determine which letter the unknown would be. And that very same small oversight actually had a very big impact on the unknown in this game. The game has trouble deciding which form of unknown will be shiny when associating it with your own trainer ID. The process is very mathematically complicated, but to put it simply, the game doesn't actually evenly distribute shininess to every different unknown form, and the result of this is shocking. Depending on your trainer ID, four unique unknown will have shiny odds completely detached from the game's normal shiny rate. But this isn't just a few numbers different. The change is drastic. The odds for some unknown letters could sway as low as 1 out of 5,120, or as high as 1 out of 18,432. But the real question is how is this information so incredibly obscure? How does almost nobody know that the unknown that spawn in this cave have completely messed up shiny rates? Well, to start, the Monian Chamber where the Unknown are found is located at quite literally one of the last locations you visit in these games. So the amount of people who even knew this location existed is absolutely tiny. And on top of this for a long time, simply put, no one knew. I actually had been wanting to talk about this little oddity since I started making obscure Pokemon information videos almost a year ago now, but up until a few months ago, the only documentation about this strange in-game phenomenon was an article in French that I did try to translate, but it didn't work out. So if you're curious about how deep this rabbit hole goes, my friend Professor Rex uploaded the first English breakdown of this oddity over on his channel, so make sure to check that out, and thank you for watching. Thank you again to Dragon City for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. And don't forget to scan that QR code for 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the Flame Night Dragon.